We've done several planner tweaks over the years as we've switched to all no-till. Things to make our planner more versatile as we're in no-till, we're in no-till with cover crops. Sometimes we're in tillage, like when we pattern tile a field and we have to go level it out. So we need the planner to adapt to all those things. One thing uh, we have struggled with in some of those situations is the closing system. So this year we're making a change on half the planner. So I'm approaching the end of my install on putting furrow force on the right 12 rows of the planner. So we're going to have 12 with furrow force and 12 with the standard spring closing system. I'm actually going to take, you can see we got one rubber and one spike. We've ran that way for a while. We did run this row last year with two spikes and liked what it did in most conditions. So I'm going to take all the spikes. I took off the furrow force half and put them over here, but 24 rows of planter, 12 rows of corn head, we're gonna have a lot of head to head comparisons between the two closing systems. So I worked with my dealer, Solid Rock Ag, to get all this stuff here and work it out with precision. Of course, we're making some content for them, but uh, I really like the idea of doing half and half the planter. I think a lot of people will, will wanna see what the results are on that. And you can see that this row is just about done. I got the wheels on it and I, I did some of the wiring on this because we have to change add an expansion hub here because we're plugging more things in. So I have to reroute zip tie a little different. But when I install stuff, especially like on the planter, I kind of go one step at a time. So like I put on all these tail pieces and then I put on the actual closing unit and then I came back and I put on the control modules, did all those. Now I'm going through all these closing wheels. You can see I got my little assembly line over here, getting all the hardware out. Got the rest of my lefts all set up. Now I'll start working on my rights. So I get those all, they're all loose. So I'll go zip all these down when I'm done. And then I'm getting my hardware to put them on the planter lined up, getting the spacers how I want. I want three on the washer there and the big spacer and two washers on the inside of the disc. So. That's the way I kind of like to do things rather than doing one row all at a time. I do kind of one step at a time and do it on every row. Kind of same philosophy for me here on the other side. So we're putting new disc openers on. So I've done all that over there. So I'll come to this after the planner, put all the disc openers on, check the spacing, torque them down. Then I'll come back and put all, all the wheels on and then zip them all tight. So I just kind of like to do one step at a time across each row. I do the same thing when I change the seed meters. I'll, I'll pop them all open, and then I'll go take all the plates out, set them up here, come back. I just do everything. Instead of doing one row all at once, I kind of do them all in baby steps. That just makes more sense in my head. So I'm gonna keep working on this. It's uh, Tuesday. I should have quite a bit of this done by the end of the day. Today, I should be working on it all day uh, a couple other things solid rock has to come out um, i went ahead and opted to get the hydraulic air compressor to run this the compressor we're using for our clean sweep they thought probably might work but the compressor actually didn't cost as much as i thought so i said let's go ahead and get the hydraulic one so there's the hydraulic air compressor that will be filling these airbags on the furrow force so i'm gonna mount it probably gonna be on the wing somewhere back here but what solid rock is going to do is they are going to um, tie it into the lift hydraulics that circuit for the planter so just the hydraulic compressor is running when the planter is down and planting and we could run it into an scv i do have a spare one but then i don't have to worry about turning it on that's like my delta force runs through the power beyond there so it's just on all the time as long as i enable it so i don't have to worry about flipping any switches or anything. So it will be truly automated on the, the downforce and now half of the, the closing system. And with it being back here, we only have to run a few feet of hydraulic hose. We don't have to go clear back up to the tractor with anything. If I understand the instructions right, um, the compressor can actually be powered off of the SRM from a row so we only have to wire it to there we don't have to run wiring all the way up to the tractor or to the battery so that'll be nice so i'm going to keep plugging away on this um, when it's all done um, it's a nice warm week hopefully everything gets wrapped up this week and everything's 
working as it should um, be dry enough, we can take it out in the field behind here in the shop and kind of um, go through the learning curve of getting this, getting this set how we want it to run and see how it works. So we got everything installed on uh, this half of the planter. It's all ready to go. You can see it's not real clean anymore, so it has been out in the field. We just kind of did a little test run to make sure there was no bugs. We've got to get some seed in the thing to make everything work right, so we're still working on that maybe yet this afternoon. We'll see. Had some, some weather over the weekend and things got cold. But uh, anyway, got it all installed. Got a little dirt on it now. Really pretty straightforward. Uh, all you do is there's there's two bolts here that hold your, your tail on your closing system from the factory. They drop off. This tail piece goes on with two bolts. This piece just hooks right into there and this one bolt here secures all together. Not, not a whole lot to it. Um, put your control module on, wire it. Uh, on your depth, you got the load sensors if you're going with the automatic system like we did. And then you got the uh, airline and just uh, I kind of tied them up, ran them all up here together. Had to put the expansion hubs on to plug everything in. Airline goes up here. Just um, I just zip tied them to the same airlines or clean sweepers on. And then you just tee it into the system there. Three eighths line and that goes up. We just did decide to put the compressor is uh, up there between the CCS tanks. Two bolts holding it on. Didn't have to drill anything. So that's all good to go. Hydraulics for that. They go into the block that's inside this shield here. So they're just tied into the lift lower system for the planter. So when the planter is lowered, the compressor can run when it's need to. And it also needs a case drain, which uh, Mark at Solid Rock, he just tied that right into here on the blower for the CCS. So that works out pretty well. And you see the other half. Now I have the two spikes on this side that I stole from the other side that now has furrow force. It does make the planter a bit wider and longer. So here we're folded up in transport position, but it's not really as much as I thought. So you can see here's the, the factory tails and then you know the stitch wheels on the back stick out a little farther, but they're, they're not quite as far back as the steps on the back of the planter. So as far as length um, really doesn't affect it. If we go around here to the other side where the other 10 rows are installed, a little bit wider, but for going down the road, uh, really no wider, just a few inches wider than the wing wheels when they're in the transport position. And, you know, you're not really going to be that close to anything. So as far as eroding and um, taking up space in the shed, really not much difference. I thought maybe it'd be a little wider than that, but it's not. So. We need to get this out in the field, run, plant seed, get it set. We messed with setting it a little bit. Setting the depth is, is real easy. So you kind of want it above where your seed is. There's two lines on these discs. This one represents inch and a half. This one's supposed to be two inches on the inside one. We can kind of get it, need to get it out there see where we're planting on seed depth, all that. But if you want to change the depth, all you do is click this up kind of got a detent in there so it holds in place and then you can crank it up or crank it down and then snap it back into place. So maybe yet this afternoon uh, we'll get a chance to uh, take it out and screw around with it and, and get it set the way we want before we get serious and uh, maybe I get some footage of it running out in the field. Oh, one thing I am going to do is I got my emergence flagging kits. I'm going to compare the fur force side to the OEM closing side and see which one has better emergence and of course I'll also take this all the way through to harvest so if you stick around for six months or so you'll see the results of that.